Well, good afternoon, friends. On behalf of Raman Science Center and Planetarium Nagpur, I welcome you all here. Uh, as you know, we are completing, just we have completed one year of vaccination, COVID vaccination program in India, just one day before, that is yesterday. And on this occasion, we have organized a lecture you uh, might be very curious about what are the vaccines and how they are made and how they affect our body. So uh, to know about it, we have organized a lecture, popular lecture on this topic, making of vaccines and its mechanism today at Raman Science Center for you all. And I'm happy that you all have joined this for this lecture. And we have a guest with us today We'll uh, start with the lecture, but uh, I request uh, our project coordinator, Mr. Manoj Kumar Banda, sir, to say a few words on this occasion and uh, welcome our guest, Madam Dr. Masita Pisi. So, uh, Manoj Kumar Banda, sir, please. Thank you, Velave. And uh, during this uh, pandemic, particularly lockdown in uh, Maharashtra and uh, many other places. Uh, it is a concern for all of us to how to protect ourselves from this uh, deadly disease and how to protect our children and uh, how to survive. Uh, the new variant like Omicron, which is uh, spreading all over the India. So with a tremendous hint thought that it is the correct time to address the people uh, how to and uh, it is also important to a lot of people who are not vaccinating themselves because of uh, the fear or maybe they did, didn't have the confidence in the vaccinations. So it is necessary to have the people to know the vaccines, what is the vaccines actually. Mm -hmm. But one thing is it's true that without vaccination we cannot stop the disease from the infection and transmission and a lot of research are going on to how the disease uh, can, how the vaccines can control the transmission itself and infection also. So it is our duty to vaccinate ourselves at the same time to understand uh, and how the vaccination and how the vaccines are manufactured undergoing different stages of clinical trials, clinical and preclinical trials. And uh, this is I want and we have here at Raman Science and Dr. Ishita Pisinadam uh, to say and the clear what is the vaccines, vaccines, COVID vaccines actually, and what are the different type of variants. Uh, and secondly, so see today we will to discuss different type of vaccines and how that what are the different type of vaccines it goes through. And uh, before it uh, giving the inspiring giving to people and what are the precautions have been taken to build confidence to on off to all of you. So thank you, Madam, for sparing time giving to Raman Sen Center. And uh, give us an opportunity to address the people regarding the business. I request now Mr. Ike Bhalawe, Education Officer, to introduce Dr. Pisi. Well, friends, this is an opportunity for us to know about the vaccination. But then what I remember about it is when we were the children, you know, uh, those who born before 80s, 1980s. So if you observe their left arm like this, you will find two marks over there. And those marks were the vaccination mark for smallpox. And this, these marks, you will not find in your age people now, those who born after 1980s, you will not find those marks on the arms of people in this, uh, these ages. Now, this is because the smallpox vaccination started in India in the year 1803, first in Mumbai that time. A small girl, three years age, was vaccinated first. And since then, it was continued till 1980s. And in the year 1980, World Health Organization has declared that this disease was eradicated from all over the world because the last case was registered 
in African countries in the year 1977. After that, there was no case, and that is why the vaccination for smallpox is completely stopped all over the world, and you will not find any kind of that virus and disease afterward. So this is the effect of vaccination. What we can say is it can eradicate the disease completely from the world. And similarly, we are trying for this new disease now. What we are called is COVID or coronavirus disease. And to uh, elaborate more on this, we have with us today. Dr. Mrs. Masita Pisi, and Pisi, madam, has did her MSc in biochemistry from Nagpur University with 75.7 percent marks, and she did PhD in biochemistry from the same university, and she has also passed before that CSIR UGC national eligibility eligibility test in the year 1997. Then she joined CSIR UGC research junior research fellowship in the year 2002. She also got selected as a candidate to appear for Shama Prasad Mukherjee fellowship award. Then she also did certificate course in gut microbiome. From University of Colorado, U.S., she also did diploma in forensic science and law, and she is currently pursuing diploma in environmental management system and ISO one four zero 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 and one four zero zero one. She has the. 17 year experience of teaching at postgraduate and graduate level and full she is working as a full time lecturer at Islam School of Biotechnology research scholar acha you held the position like this okay research scholar at School of Marine Science Cochin University Kerala junior research fellowship Fellow at National Environmental Engineering Research Institute, Nagpur. These are the various positions he held before this, and currently, England taking the prize. And uh, this is the award. And we have here at Raman Science and Dr. Ishta Pisinagar uh, to say and clear what is the basis of this COVID basis actually, and what are the different type of variants. Uh, and second, see today, she will introduce us different type of vaccines and how that the part of the different type of vaccines it goes through. And uh, before it uh, giving explain giving to people and what are the precautions have been taken to build confidence to on off to all of you. So thank you, Madam, for sparing time, giving to Raman Sir Center and uh, give us an opportunity to address the people regarding the vaccines. I request now Mr. Ekta Balave, Education Officer, to introduce Dr. Pisi. Well, friends, this is an opportunity for us to know about the vaccination. But then, what I remember about it is when we were the children, you know, uh, those who born. Before 80s, 1980s. So, if you observe their left arm like this, you will find two marks over there, and those marks were the vaccination mark for smallpox. And this, these marks, you will not find in your age people now. Those who born after 1980s, you will not find those marks on the arms of people. In this uh, these ages, now this is because the smallpox vaccination started in India in the year 1803. First in Mumbai, that time a small girl, three years age, was vaccinated first, and since then it was continued till 1980s. And in the year 1980, World Health Organization has declared that this disease. Was eradicated 
from all over the world because the last case was registered in african countries in the year 1977 after that there were no case and that is why the vaccination for smallpox is completely stopped all over the world and you will not find any kind of that virus and disease afterward so this is the effect of vaccination what we can say is it can eradicate the disease completely from the world and similarly we are trying for this new disease now what we are called is covid or corona virus disease and to uh, elaborate more on this we have with us today dr mrs masita pisi and pisi madam has did her msc in biochemistry from nagpur university with 75.7% marks and she did phd in biochemistry from the same university and she has also passed before that csir ugc national eligibility eligibility test in the year 1997 then she joined csir ugc research junior research fellowship in the year 2002 she also got selected as a candidate to appear for shama prasad mukherjee fellowship award then she also did certificate course in gut microbiome from university of colorado us she also did diploma in forensic science and law and she is currently pursuing diploma in environmental management system and iso 14000 and 14001 she has the 17 year experience of teaching at post graduate and graduate level and full she is working as a full time lecturer at isla school of biotechnology research scholar acha you held the position like this okay research scholar at school of marine science coaching university kerala junior research fellowship fellow at national environmental engineering research institute nagpur these are the various positions he held before this and then he sees teaching at undergraduate and post graduate students of biochemistry and biotechnology for 19 years in various capabilities at hislop college nagpur she is the principal investigator of dst sanction project and recognized phd supervisor of rtm nagpur university and currently three students are working under her for doctoral research she is a trained plant biotechnologist and molecular biologist she has published many books and many national and international publications in her name her research interest is microbiome that bioactives from endophytes and plant biotechnology and you eurothiasis management she received best research paper award at international conference held at pune in 2021 so we have a such great personality with us today and uh, i will not take much time and i request madam masita pisi to deliver a lecture on making of vaccines and its mechanism madam pisi thank you thank you sir thank you mr manoj pandey sir for inviting me for delivering this lecture today i also thank education officer mr abhimanyu bhilave for uh, making this uh, lecture possible and especially on this day when we stand here after completing one year of covid vaccination and uh, vaccinating over 1.5 billion people in india uh, over repeated request from bhilave sir i have kept my slides very simple so that students can understand 
and if at all some problem is there you can ask me i will try to uh, mitigate those issues so let us begin with i hope you all get benefited from this lecture okay good afternoon everyone all the students faculties teachers and everyone who are on board for this lecture today on all the uh, social flat, uh, media platforms and on the meet vaccines have been in our minds since last so many years ever since covid struck us so today i'm trying to give you a precise um, what to say story how the uh, vaccines uh, started and how far we have reached when we are actually facing this pandemic situation next slide now to let us begin with understanding the immune system first now just as we have respiratory system nervous system we have immune system in our body the function of immune system is to recognize threat and to provide defense strategies now whenever body perceives some threat in the form of microorganisms the defense or the immune system prepares itself with certain mechanisms these mechanisms they fall in two categories one is called innate immunity and the other one is called adaptive or acquired immunity so when we say innate immunity by birth we have certain mechanisms which the body employs against all the classes of organism to avoid restrict or kill them so those mechanisms which are there in our body right from the time of birth are called innate immunity mechanisms it is very non specialized kind and the body will not have any kind of memory about the pathogen if it is employing innate immunity then comes the second branch of immune system that is adaptive or acquired immunity here in the body first interacts with the organism and then prepares or then forms the strategy in this case no mechanism is there from the time of birth you will have to first interact with the path causing organism get disease first recover and then your body will retain the memory for the next time so if we think about this next slide please okay now the central thing to immune system or development of immunity is identification of the organism as a threat how do we in our real life how do we recognize a threat by appearance voice mannerism name or the behavior of the person now if you think about our immune system how does immune system recognize a threat there also we have certain strategy the principle is how distinct is the positive organism from your own cell that means discrimination between self and non self all microorganisms they will have some unique molecular patterns on their surface they will have unique biomolecules on their surface which are not found on human cell or some cellular components which are unique to the positive organism next slide so let us understand this by taking this example supposing there is mr x who is our enemy now mr x is our enemy and he is very dangerous and harmful he is harmful when he is alive now imagine a situation when mr x is dead you can still identify this person as an enemy but he is he will not be dangerous he cannot give you any harm or cause any harm 
Now imagine a similar situation when a live bacteria enters into your system. The bacteria or virus or any microorganism for that, um, for if we say, is a threat, dangerous, harmful, and it will cause disease till the time it is alive. Now supposing the same bacteria is not alive, it is dead, inactive, less potent, it will still retain all the unique feature on its surface, but it cannot cause the disease. Okay. Now, what to do? Your immune system will, can recognize such dead, inactive, less potent bacteria with all the uniqueness which it has on its surface as a threat. And it can design a strategy to combat the disease. Now, in this case, you will not get the disease. So, next slide. So, if you put all those dead inactive cells, important or less potent organisms, and bottle and bottle them up into a vaccine, and get it inoculated into a healthy human being, the immune system will recognize the threat, but it will not be hampered by the disease. It will not get the disease, and it will retain the memory for the future thing. So, vaccine is a biological preparation which improves immunity to a particular disease. A vaccine typically contains an agent that resembles the disease-causing microorganism and is often made from weakened or killed microorganism. Next. Now let us go back to some historical aspects. The first ever vaccine was against smallpox disease. Sir Edward Jenner, an English physician and scientist, gave the first vaccine against smallpox. Now Edward Jenner in 1796 observed the first, first well, it, uh, the development of the first vaccine came out from a very minor observation that milkmaids who serve or nurse cows, they get a disease called cowpox. Now whoever gets this cowpox disease were not fatally infected by a dreaded disease by then, which is called smallpox. Now this small observation triggered the imagination of Edward Jenner that something is happening because of this cowpox microorganism in the body of the milkmaids, which makes them immune to the smallpox disease. He published his findings and his findings were met with equal amount of praise and criticism. Click first. One of his colleagues, one of his colleagues actually published over 400 cases citing examples how people got cow-like side effects. You can see on the screen that ox-faced boy, a old lady with cow-like horns. These kind of oppositions were then also, which we are right now observing against the COVID vaccination. Okay. Now, to, if we continue, Jenner's observation was pretty simple. If I can explain through this picture, a milkmaid, Sarah, infected with cowpox. Jenner obtained all the cowpox pus from the cowpox blisters of Sarah and inoculated this boy called James Fipp. James Fipp fell, falls ill for a very short time and then he recovers. When he got recovered, what Edward Jenner did was he got smallpox scabs from a patient suffering from smallpox and inoculated James Fipp with the scabs of smallpox. And what was the observation? James Fipp was unaffected and he got protection from smallpox. This was the pioneering work or observation or small experiment done by Jenner 
who triggered the entire journey of human race about vaccine. Please click. Those days, the inoculation of smallpox scabs was a very tricky thing to do. You can see in this picture that long nozzle-like rod was used to infuse or to blow out these scabs of smallpox into the nose of the people to vaccinate them. From there to this day, when we have smart injections where we cannot even feel when we got vaccinated, we have come a long way ahead. We have crossed several milestones by discovering so many different vaccines of different kinds against many diseases like smallpox, rabies, typhoid, then polio, mumps, rotavirus, and to name, there are so many. Next slide, please. Today, we have only 34 or plus vaccines for more than 400 known pathogens, which are actually harmful to man. So we need many more vaccines to be developed against so many diseases which are prevalently affecting the mankind. Next. Now let us discuss about what are the different types of vaccines available. Depending on what we are using to develop vaccines, we have different types of vaccines. Like just you can see on the slide that it is live attenuated and inactivated. These two vaccines are comes under whole organism vaccines. That means we are using the whole organism as vaccine. So live attenuated, inactivated, these are whole organism vaccine. Then comes the toxoid vaccines where we are actually using the pathogenic toxins. Okay. So we are not using the organism. We are just using the toxin produced by the causative agent. Then there is another category called subunit vaccines where we are using a part of the antigenic substance. Antigenic substance means the substance uh, which is actually responsible to give you the disease. Okay. So subunit vaccines are those where we can use uh, a protein or a carbohydrate or nucleic acid from the causative organism and take it as a vaccine. Then we have conjugate vaccines where we club a particular part of the organism, say some protein or a carbohydrate, usually carbohydrate, with another antigenic protein to build the vaccine. Today we also have combination kind of vaccine where we get protection from more than one disease. We have clubbed vaccine uh, agents from three or four disease causing microbes into one bottle and we are providing a combination. For example, DPT and even MMR, these are examples of uh, combination vaccine. Then we have certain innovative vaccines called ed edible vaccines where we have introduced the antigenic substance in the plant genome of vegetables or fruits and we have a transformed plant which produces uh, the fruit or whatever the edible part which can, which we can be consumed. Next slide. So, continuing with the types of vaccines, we have these main categories like live attenuated vaccines Example, measles, mumps, rubella, etc. Inactivated vaccines, we have polio vaccine, hepatitis, toxoid, we have diphtheria, tetanus, and the last is the subunit or conjugate vaccines. In this category, we can find hepatitis, influenza, meningococcal, and pneumococcal, and even COVID vaccines belong to this particular group. Next slide, please. Now, continuing with classification of vaccine, as I told you, vaccines, we can use whole agent as vaccine or subunit. So, inactivated, killed vaccine or attenuated vaccines, they belong to the category of whole agent. And there are several advantages and disadvantages associated with this kind of uh, this group of vaccines, therefore, 
we went on to develop subunit vessels. Next. Now, this is the slide explains how we develop attenuated and inactivated vaccines. So, as I said, in at a live, let us take the example of live attenuated vaccines first. In this case, the disease causing agent is actually cultured and cultured under suboptimal conditions. Culture ka matlab hota hai. Uh, hum usko, uh, grow karte okay so we grow those microorganisms under suboptimal conditions conditions which are not favorable so what will happen after passing many generations the virus or the bacteria becomes like weakened they are less potent and they become weakened okay so when we get a strain which are weaker which are not able to cause the disease anymore we take them as the vaccine strain and make the vaccine. Next slide, please. Control material. Next slide, please. Okay. Now, compared to the live attenuated vaccines, we have the inactivated ones. What are inactivated ones? Simply the dead ones. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to culture those microorganisms and kill them using heat or some kind of chemical. And we use those killed microorganisms as vaccines uh, to induce the acquired immunity. Now, if you must be thinking if they are dead, how can they, are, they can be useful? Remember the slide which I showed? Even if Mr. X is dead, he can be identified. So these microorganisms, even if they are dead, they retain all the unique features on their surface. Therefore, your immune system is able to interact with them, recognize them, and make the uh, strategy or immune mechanism. Moving forward, yes. Now, who is the best? The attenuated one or the activated vaccines? Okay, so each one of this group, they will have their own uh, drawbacks as well as positive things. Like for example, attenuated vaccines, they require only single booster because they are live. They only require single booster, but at the same time, they are less stable. And the another factor which is useful for attenuated vaccine is the host immunity or the mechanism the host produces. Host can produce both. It can produce antibodies as well as it can have a cell-mediated immunity which has a long-lasting memory. Okay. But the problem with the attenuated uh, vaccine is that these strains, they are only weakened, weaker strains, but they are still live. It is possible that at some point of time, uh, organism can revert back to its virulent stage. Okay, which we have observed. Aap logo ne bhi suna hoga ki vaccine ke karan kisi ki death ho gayi ya kisi ko reaction ho gaya. Okay. The next thing is, if you consider at the same time the inactivated vaccine, virulence is inactivated, so there is no question of reverting back to the um, virulent stage, but and it is more stable. But it needs multiple booster doses because utna strong in activation of immune system nahi hota jitna ki attenuated Okay, but virulent stage it never comes back. Moving ahead, next. Now under this group we have one of the important milestone that is killed and attenuated polio vaccine. Which we is the pehle wali slide lagaye ka please. Okay, fine. Like sun polio vaccine, which is a killed type of or uh, inactivated kind of polio vaccine, and the other polio vaccine that is seven polio vaccine, which is a live attenuated vaccine. Next slide, please. 
Now moving ahead with the next group of vaccines, that is toxoid vaccine. Toxoid vaccine, we are using only the toxic. For example, the diphtheria causing microorganism, it comes into your body. It, the organism is not poisonous. The toxin it produces is poisonous. So what we are using here, the inactivated toxin itself as a vaccine. Okay. So the examples are tetanus and diphtheria. Next slide. The third group is subunit vaccines where we are not playing with the whole organism. We are taking up a part of the uh, organism which is actually the which gets identified by your immune system and that part is taken as uh, pre for preparing vaccines. Therefore, this group is called subunit vaccine. Now, subunit vaccine will not have all those risks which are associated with the whole organism group of vaccines. It consists of specific purified macromolecules derived from the pathogen. On the slide, we have given an example of hepatitis B vaccine. You can see here that in 1970, the hepatitis B virus was identified and then we prepared a subunit vaccine by isolating the surface antigen gene. This viral antigenic gene was introduced into Baker's yeast genome and yeast was transformed. Now what will happen? Your yeast will produce this antigenic substance and next slide please. Okay, here you can see that transformed yeast is actually grown in fermenters in large quantities, multiplication of yeast in fermenters, all the multiplied yeast, they are producing the hepatitis B uh, antigenic peptide and all those things are packaged as vaccine which we are using. This kind of subunit vaccine we are still using in case of COVID also, which you must be knowing already. Next slide. Now, another group is recombinant vector vaccines. Here, we are, what we are doing is we take out the antigenic gene from the organism. We combine it with a vector. Vector is another DNA, any um, um, gene carrying vehicle, you can say, like plasmid or viral genome, in which this new gene can be introduced. So, if the whole thing is known as recombinant vector. Okay. So, this vector, in this vector, in this DNA molecule, which is acting as a vehicle carrier of gene, you put the desired antigenic gene from the organism and you make a recombinant DNA. This chimeric DNA is introduced into the host wherein the gene will multiply, the host cell will express this antigenic protein and this antigenic protein will be recognized by the host immune system and the immune system will be triggered. Okay. So one of the favorite is adenovirus which is a harmless virus, friendly virus we can say and this viral genome is used as a vector and most of the COVID viral vector uh, vaccines are, have been prepared using adenovirus vector. Next slide. Okay. Now then comes the last category that is nucleic acid vectors or vaccines or DNA vaccines. These DNA vaccines, uh, what we do is we take out the DNA and inject into cells of the body where the host machinery will multiply this DNA, convert into pathogenic proteins. It is similar to viral vector DNA only, but in this case, no vector is used. We are directly uh, introducing the DNA of the, uh, the, the antigenic gene into the host genome, and the host himself will produce the peptide, and this peptide will be recognized by the host immune system. Next. Now, advantages, there are many advantages of DNA vaccines. 
like they are stable they can be easily transported they stimulate almost all the possible mechanisms of immune system and uh, they are very focused on the antigenic peptide therefore they are well targeted kind of mechanism okay now they ensure long term immunity next slide please now we have conjugate vaccine at times what is possible is ki the organism has something on its surface which is unique okay but it is not all that antigenic there is a difference between unique and antigenic unique means not found on human body okay but maybe but your immune system will not react to it antigenic means your immune system reacts to a particular substance so if you consider all the biomolecules like carbohydrate protein nucleic acid fats proteins are most antigenic nucleic acids are somewhat antigenic carbohydrate and lipids are they are lesser antigenic they have lesser antigenicity so suppose in a microorganism or a positive agent has its on the on its surface has a less immunogenic substance but it is unique <laughs> a vaccine from such a less antigenic substance so we go for conjugate vaccines where we take out that part of the organism club it with a protein molecule make the whole combination as antigenic now your immune system will happily recognize it and produce antibodies or will mediate cell related immunity okay next slide so as i have already explained combination vaccines matlab multiple disease protection in one single vaccine next slide <coughs> then comes the edible vaccine wherein a plant genome is modified by introducing the antigenic gene from the organism and the plant will start expressing those proteins now if you consume fruits flowers and edible parts of such plant your body will automatically gain um it will be introduced to the antigenic peptide and body will immune system will start preparing making antibodies and it will retain the memory also next slide now this is one example where they are trying to introduce swine flu corn flakes wherein the antigenic peptide or gene from um, swine flu has been introduced into the corn flakes so in future we will just consume those corn flakes and we will get immune to swine flu since it is a gmo there are several uh, like uh, regulations are there for bringing into market and using it as a vaccine next slide please now let us talk after we have covered different types of vaccines let us slowly move ahead with development of vaccines so all those vaccines which we have right now discussed they can be categorized into different generations okay so till now we come up with we have come up with three generations of vaccines the first generation involves the primitive kind of vaccine which jenner started the whole organism inactivated and attenuated the second generation vaccine is your subunit vaccine and third generation vaccine wherein you are using nucleic acid as vaccine next slide please now how do we make vaccines effective effective vaccine vaccine preparation actually is dependent on four factors the first thing is the disease itself what type of disease it is does it give us a window period or not then the second factor is the organism the particular strain of the organism which is actually causing this particular disease third is proper administration even supposing we are ready with the strain we are able to create a vaccine route of administration also plays a very important role in triggering the immune system so just having a vaccine will not mean that you will you are now ready to trigger your immune system root of administration is equally important okay the last thing is response given by immune system 
so which actually depends how we are administering what we are actually inoculating into the healthy human beings to get their immune system triggered next slide please now there are different stages of development of vaccine fine the first thing of course r and d where you know about the disease who is causing it how it is being caused how the organism gains entry into your system where it lands up what is the first component of your body which comes in contact with the this organism how it multiplies what is its genomic structure appearance life cycle time to time for multiplication all those things comes under basic rnd kisi bhi vaccine rnd is important once everything then you go to the next stage that is exploratory stage exploratory stage means finding the agents to be used for preparation of vaccine okay once you are ready with all the agents to try for tyas vaccine the next major stage is preclinical stage where you test your vaccine in animal models to see whether it is actually interacting with the immune system or not giving some mechanisms or not once you safely cross the preclinical stage then you get into the very big stage and important stage called clinical developmental phase which spans into phase 1 2 3 and 4 where actual human subjects are tried with vaccines and they record safety dose side effects everything during the clinical development once all the four phases of clinical development are over the product is registered launched mass production is done and after that it is now ready for used to be used in for the wider population next slide please now to elaborate on clinical because this is the phase where most of the vaccines they get stuck up phase 1 is the human trial very few members say 32 less than 100 people they are inoculated with the candidate vaccines and safety measures and safety dose are evaluated if you cross this stage you land up in the phase 2 clinical trial where the number of target people will be more and safety as well as stimulation wider application of the immune system how immune system is responding what are the uh, reactions the immune system showing all these data you gather from the phase 2 clinical trials you get more uh, idea about how what is the reaction what are the safety aspects how safe is the vaccine what is the dose safer to be applied all those things third stage you can see here that more than 200 people get registered for third phase and in third phase extensive testing of the candidate vaccine is performed on a larger target population and vaccine gets actually uh, approval from the third phase actually wherein you learn whether it is actually giving you some safety from the disease or not being harmless is one thing giving protection is another thing phase 1 and phase 2 will tell you it is safe to use but phase 3 will tell you whether it is actually protecting you or not from the candidate disease okay once third phase is over oxing uh, vaccine gets into manufacture phase and the fourth phase for the regulation and approval by fda all those things comes in the fourth phase next slide no so the same thing has been de depicted in this slide too you can see phase 1 evaluate safety determine safe do dosage and identifies the side effect phase 2 test effectiveness further and further evaluate safety phase 3 gives you confirms the effectiveness monitors side effects compares to other treatment effects and collect information phase 4 provides additional information after the approval risk benefits and those things 
The important thing in this slide is note down the lower most uh, lines where it is mentioned. Supposing 70 candidates, 70 percent of the drugs they cross phase one trial. If you are trying 100 vaccine agents, it is possible that only 70 clear the first phase. If they land up in the second phase, out of the 70, only 33 percent goes into phase three, and out of 33, 25% of that 33% clears the phase 3 trial and gets into the phase 4. So these many trials are done before a vaccine is actually brought into market. Next slide, please. So here you can see, again I would focus on the last line. Where it is written, you can see here, this is what I have written. Three to six of phase one lab work, sabse bada hota hai. you can take maximum time here. Then three to six years in drug discovery screening for the agent. That means exploration, who can act as a probable vaccine. For that, three to six years. Then preclinical pre research with animal models, it can go up to one to five years depending on what we are using or what type of organism it is. Then comes the clinical trial. The whole phase one, phase two, phase three can take up from three to seven years. And finally, fourth uh, stage, which can go up to additional four years. So almost a development of a vaccine to using vaccine in the market or the launching the vaccine for uh, people's consumption it takes almost 10 to 12 years to complete the whole uh, journey from discovery to launch as a product. Next slide, please. Uh, skip this slide. So, stage when we go to vaccine manufacturer, just say, you have heard of the Serum Institute of India or Bharat Biotech, they are developing vaccine against. COVID. So what do they have in their industry? Vaccine development unit. You can see here, R&D, everything is done in research lab. Okay. Institutions, research institutions, they do the preclinical thing also. Vaccine manufacturer will have these units. Upstream processing. That means, upstream processing means, when you develop a vaccine in a lab, it is done on batch scale. थोड़े छोटे अमाउंट के लिए होता है फिर उसके बाद धीरे-धीरे पायलट स्केल मास के ये अपग्रेडिंग बोलते हैं इसको ठीक है सो अपस्ट्रीम प्रोसेसिंग होती है कि किस तरीके से जो चीज हमने छोटे यूनिट पे प्रूफ किया है उसको मास लेवल पे लेके जाने के लिए कैसा करेंगे उसको हम अपस्ट्रीम प्रोसेसिंग बोलते हैं देन सो यू कैन सी हैव अ अपस्ट्रीम प्रोसेसिंग यूनिट मिडस्ट्रीम Downstream processing unit, downstream processing unit matlab, when you are already ready with the candidate, you may now need to package them. Okay. Then you have a formulation unit wherein you package the candidate vaccine along with substances which are required for its stability uh, or other things joki vaccine ko effective banate as it is put salts add karte, kabi kabi adjuvants add karte. All those things come under formulation, then filling, capping, sealing, labeling, quality control, and final packaging reaches for the people. Next. Now, after knowing this background about COVID vaccine, uh, general vaccines, let us take a few steps for COVID vaccination. So we all know that we, jo hum ya, pe abhi online interact kar rahe, this is because of this COVID vaccine or COVID virus, coronavirus, who belongs to the zoonotic virus category. Zoonotic virus category means viruses which uh, come from, which gets transferred to human beings from animals. Okay. So it belongs, it is known as coronavirus. We have two more relatives, SARS-CoV virus and MERS-CoV virus. They are enveloped kind of viruses. In Kyuparik envelope and uh, 125 nm in diameter. Their genome is single stranded RNA genome and they have a nucleocapsid of helical symmetry. This is the type of virus which causes COVID. Next slide. 
Now, in COVID, till date, you must have heard of different types of vaccine, right? Huh? Covishield, Covaxin, then uh, Sputnik. But they, if you go to the biochemical level, all these vaccines they are different types. And how do they differ? You can see on the slide. COVID vaccines. We have now three different types of COVID vaccines. First category is viral vector COVID vaccine. Viral vector means what we have done. Is we insert a gene, viral gene. Okay, for a for example, in coronavirus, spike protein is the uh, dangerous thing, right? Huh? So we take out the gene for spike protein. Gene is introduced into another harmless virus genome, which is known as vector or carrier. The whole recombinant vector plus the desired gene, the chimeric DNA. Is introduced into the host. Okay, it is this is the vaccine, and the host immune system will get triggered when the host cells express this gene as part of their own machinery. Okay, हमारे अपने खुद के cells spike proteins produce करेंगे. Disease तो होगी नहीं, but spike protein will be displayed on our cells, and our immune cells will recognize them, remember them, and give you. Antibodies and cell-mediated immunity. We have another COVID vaccine, which are like DNA type COVID vaccines, where we are introducing DNA, synthetic DNA of the viral gene. We are not introducing the viral genome as such. We are making a DNA copy of the viral genome, and that synthetic DNA is getting introduced into the cell. There are different techniques to introduce the DNA into a cell. Uh, like shotgun method, gene gun method. So these DNA are like sucked up into the cell, and then when the cell divides, the DNA itself multiplies, and along with, there also you will express the viral proteins, and immune system will recognize those viral proteins and give you the uh, immunity. Then RNA introduces an RNA sequence coded for a disease-specific antigen. ओके okay. अगर जैसे स्पाइक प्रोटीन है तो स्पाइक प्रोटीन को कोड करने वाले रीजन को कोड करने वाला एमआरएनए हम इसको सेल के अंदर लगाएंगे वंस एंटीजन इज रिप्रोड्यूस विद इन द बॉडी द बॉडी विल रिकॉग्नाइज इट एंड इम्यून रिस्पांस विल बी ट्रिगर्ड नेक्स्ट स्लाइड तो दिस इज अ स्लाइड अवेलेबल ऑल ओवर द इंटरनेट सो जस्ट टू कंपेयर द टाइप ऑफ डिफरेंट कोविड वैक्सीन्स व्हिच वी हैव नाउ After knowing different types of COVID vaccine, up to this much may I go? What do we mean by a viral vector? How Moderna is different from AstraZeneca, or Pfizer is different from Sputnik? You can see here AstraZeneca or Covishield is a viral vector, requires two doses. Moderna is a RNA vector, giving you 95% effectiveness. Pfizer is also a RNA vector. Now Sputnik is a viral vector vaccine. All of these vaccines now we are using. Many of us are already vaccinated. Who are not kindly go and get vaccinated because all these vaccines they are giving you effective protection at least say 80 to 90 percent effectiveness. They are protecting you. Even if you get the disease, it will not be that fatal. So go and get vaccinated. Next slide. So as we stand today. we are proud to complete one year of covid vaccination drive in india with over 1.5 billion people vaccinated from edward jenner's smallpox to covid 19 a journey worth remembering i salute edward jenner for giving us this vaccine phenomenon which is saving people more than anything on this earth thank you next slide please thank you madam and friends uh, madam will be very happy to uh, answer your queries if you have any so if you have any queries if you want to know something more about or you have any questions regarding this letter then you can ask your question just switch on your mic one by one and then you can ask your question 
Yes, anyone? Uh, sir, I have a doubt. Yes, tell me your name first. Uh, my name is Rikrita Swai. I am studying in class 6. Okay, yes, yes. yes. We can ask question. Thank you. 